Hi, welcome to another Biomedical Engineers TV video. In this video, we will look into baby incubators and some information about radiant warmers. So, where did it all begin? The first infant incubators had been invented in France 30 years earlier by Dr. Stephanie Tarnier, who supposedly got the idea for using incubators for babies after visiting the Paris Zoo and seeing large egg incubators used to hatch chicks. The warmer helps prevent the serious consequences of lack of warmth, including increased risk of infection and the potential for organs to shut down, diabetes, heart disease, low IQ, and in many cases, death. Underweight or premature babies are particularly susceptible to dying from lack of warmth because they have less body fat than other babies. Every year, about 4 million babies born premature or underweight die during the first four weeks of life. So why are baby incubator or radiant warmers needed? Incubators and radiant warmers are used to maintain the body temperature of newborn infants. This is best done so that the energy expended for metabolic heat production is minimized. The heat output of these devices is usually regulated by servo control to keep the skin temperature constant at a site on the abdomen where a thermistor probe is attached. In incubators, air temperature can also be controlled as an alternative to skin temperature servo control. Increased ambient humidity, heat shields and clothing have been used to decrease the evaporative or no evaporative heat loss of infants in incubators under certain conditions. Double-walled incubators, by adding a second inner layer of plexiglass, reduce radiant heat loss. They may also reduce total heat loss, but only if air temperature is controlled, rather than skin temperature. The minimal oxygen consumption under a radiant warmer is the same, or perhaps slightly higher, than it is for the same infant in an incubator. Compared with incubators, the partition of body heat loss is quite different under radiant warmers. The major advantage of the radiant warmer is the easy access it provides to critically ill infants without disturbing the thermal environment. Its major disadvantage is the increase in insensible water loss produced by the radiant warmer. Most infants can be safely and adequately cared for in either incubator or radiant warmer bed. So, how do baby incubators and radiant warmers work? Let's start with baby incubators. Fully enclosed, an infant incubator carefully controls its environment to protect infants during their earliest stages of life when they're most vulnerable. The incubator may include an AC-powered heater, a water container to add humidity, a motorized fan to circulate the warm and humid air throughout the cabin of the incubator, a control valve through which oxygen may be added, and a servo control to help regulate air temperature, a temperature-sensing thermistor taped to the infant's abdomen. Hand access ports with doors limit the introduction of cooler air while the infant is being handled, and the hood or side panel can be opened to gain greater access to the infant. The heat circulated in the cabin is then absorbed into the body by blood convection and tissue conduction, ideally keeping both the skin and core temperature maintained by minor variations. Now, let's look at radiant warmers. Radiant warmers are regularly used in delivery rooms and neonatal care units to simultaneously provide external heat and open access to newborns. Immediately following birth, infants are routinely placed under the warm radiant light to help stabilize their temperature until they can achieve self-thermoregulation. Monitoring and resuscitation can easily be performed from the open access of a radiant warmer, along with any necessary procedures. Radiant warmers are also used for critically ill patients that require constant nursing intervention. Radiant warmers are usually overhead heating units, consisting of a heat source, skin temperature sensor, servo control unit, and both visual and audible alarms. The heating element generates radiant energy in the far IR wavelength region, but is limited to prevent thermal damage to the infant. The IR energy is readily absorbed by the infant's fragile skin, increasing blood flow in the skin, then transferring the heat to the rest of the infant's body by blood convection and tissue conduction. Since a radiant warmer is open to the air, evaporation is a major factor of heat loss. Most radiant warmers have short walls around the perimeter of the mattress to reduce the amount of overflow over the patient and thus limit evaporative heat loss. Let's look into the components of a baby incubator. All infant incubators work on the same principle. A fan blows filtered ambient air over a heating element and a water container. Through a control valve, additional oxygen can be supplied to the air. The moistened, heated, and enriched air now flows into the above cabinet with the baby. One part of the air escapes from the cabinet through vent holes, another part gets back into the air processing. 
The major components of a baby incubator are the fan, filters, heater, temperature control, humidity control, and oxygen control. First, let's look into the fan. The fan takes the filtered room air and blows it over or through the heating element and the humidifier. Without the fan, the heat cannot be conducted away from the heating element, and the heating element, and thus the incubator, would overheat. The second component is the filter. Simple incubators are equipped with washable foam filters. After washing and drying, they can be reused. Modern incubators, however, usually have disposable bacterial filters. They cannot be cleaned and have to be renewed. The third component is the heater. A heating element made from coil resistance wire as known from hair dryers or the tube type, flat or coiled, as seen in autoclaves are used to heat up the air. But unlike in autoclaves, the heater has much less power and thus does not get so hot. The power rating is between 100 and 300 watts. The heater is controlled by an electronic temperature control unit via a relay or triac or simply by a thermostat. The fourth component is temperature control. Simple incubators are controlled by a thermostat which consists of a sensor and a pressure can. The sensor is a thin capillary tube which leads into the pressure can, or expansion chamber. This chamber has a movable metal lid or diaphragm. This closed system contains a liquid or gas which expands when getting warmer. The lid moves and activates a connected electrical switch. The fifth component is humidity control. The heated air flows over the water in the water container and gets moistened. The humidity can be regulated by closing and opening a deflector plate over the container. Other incubators have a water heater which creates more humidity the warmer the water gets. The humidity should be adjustable between 40 and 90 percent. The humidity is measured by a hygrometer, a digital, or a traditional dial instrument. The humidifier should be filled up only with distilled water, only in order to avoid corrosive damage to the incubator. The sixth component is oxygen control. Most of the infant incubators have a hose connection for applying additional oxygen from an external cylinder. Oxygen concentrator, or from the central gas supply. In this case, the warmed and moistened air also gets enriched with oxygen. Alternatively, the baby gets the additional oxygen directly via a nasal cannula. Let's look into the types of baby incubators. There are several different types of baby incubators, and your baby may be in different types at different times depending on their needs. These include the open box incubator, which provides heat underneath the baby but is otherwise open. The closed box incubator. This type has a fresh air filtration system that prevents the loss of moisture from the air and helps prevent infections. Double wall incubator. This type has a double wall system for even more protection from heat and moisture loss. Servo control incubator. This incubator can be programmed to adjust the temperature and humidity level based on sensors that are attached to the baby. Transport incubators. These are used to move babies from one place to another, such as from one part of the hospital to another or a different hospital altogether. This was the simplified video on baby incubators and infant radiant warmers. As there are many points that need to be covered about radiant warmers, we will look into that in another video. I hope video. I hope you loved this video, and if you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.